Good evening, everyone. This is Ryan Hoyme, a.k.a. Massage Nerd. And this show is brought to you by our friends at Massage Magazine Insurance Plus. Massage Magazine has been exploring touch therapies for over 25 years and has used that industry knowledge to develop the best value liability insurance in the business. Welcome, everyone. This is Ryan Hoyme, a.k.a. Massage Nerd. And tonight we have a special guest again for the second time, Helen Hodgson. Welcome, Helen. Welcome. Thank you very much, Ryan. It's great to be back. Yeah, so we've got a great topic, and um, also my Facebook group and also my Facebook page. Tons of people always ask about um, mobile spas, too, so this is great. Good. Yep, and I see you chiming in a lot in, in those, too, so that's definitely helping. Yep, and so um, what is a mobile spa, and um, how do you start your own mobile spa business then? Um, well, Mobile Spa is offering in-home um, massage and spa services to clients, so you save them the time and energy of driving to and from the spa. Um, and I got started back in, well, actually I've been doing mobile massage since 95, um, when I graduated a long time ago. Um, I was working at a spa and then I kept getting requests from clients to bring my table to their home. So I did that for about seven years. And then in 2000, I expanded and introduced other um, spa services like facials and manicures and pedicures and contracted other massage and spa technicians to join me so I could reach more, more people. Um, you know, we can serve so many more clients that way. But I really, um, back in 2000, I got started mainly because I was reaching a burnout. I was doing so many massages. I was doing like six or seven in-home massages a day and um, I kept getting sick like every three or four months because I was just not you know taking enough t time off and resting um, so I used to have to cancel my clients and I thought I can't do this anymore I just keep canceling I need to build a, a backup team so once I started doing that and, and build it up over the years um, I now work when you know when I want to and I'm, I'm the main thing is able to serve a lot more clients than just one-on-one. -on -one. But, um, so you kind of work when you want to, but um, are, do you have to be available a lot different hours then? Well, I, my hours are 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Those are the operation hours every day, but that doesn't mean to say I'm working 9 till 9. So I have a lot of my regular clients that I've seen now for about 16 years, and I still see them a couple of times a month. Um, but new clients, when they come in, and when we do spa parties, there may be 9 to 12 to 15 women getting different services. I'm often there just maybe coordinated it, or I'm still doing some hands-on work. But I've got my team there doing the other services as well. So um, so physically and stuff like that, so you don't get as burnt out too then, right? Right, right, yeah. yeah. So I'm still able to keep my hand in because... When I was reaching then out before, back in, you know, before 2000, I didn't want to quit the career because I loved the massage therapy so much. So I, this was one way to stay in and not have to do so many massages every day. Yep, definitely. And why would someone want to start their own mobile spa business, would you think? Well, somebody would want to start their own mobile spa business. They'd be similar to me, like they're reaching burnout. Um, or also, if they don't want to stay in the confinements of a spa, you know, looking at the same four walls every day, and they want more flex. Somebody who wants more flexibility in the schedule. Um, somebody who wants only wants to work part time. Somebody who wants to spend more time with their family, maybe. And um, somebody also who wants to travel. Um, you know, the, the great thing about doing this mobile work is you you don't know what the next day is going to bring. You're going to different areas of the city. There may be some chance to travel abroad if you have a client that, that travels. Um, one of my students actually who took my class, she's now doing backstage massage for musicians. That was her thing, her passion that she wanted to do. So now she travels with bands doing backstage massage. Oh, that's How cool awesome. is that? Yep. <laughs> you can't get better than that. So. <laughs> no, no, it's great. Because yeah. once you get out of the full world, there's so much diversity to the work. I mean, you know, I might be working in a mansion one day, I might be working by a pool side, I might be working, um, you know, in a gorgeous, another gorgeous house, um, backstage myself, I do some studio work as well, so it's, it's so varied and it's, it's so much fun. And massage therapists in general, too, they need to find other avenues 
um, for income down the road too. So you just never know because with myself, I actually have a gun stock deformity in, in my right arm and it's bent at like a 45 degree angle. And it's oh. and, and started to give me a lot of problems when I was given 20 plus massages a, a week. So that's when I started to teach them. So it just definitely helped out a lot. Right, right. Yeah, you have to be creative. Um, it's, it's a, I know it's a little tough when you're first starting out because, you know, if you're working for somebody else and they schedule, you know, you five or six hours of massage a day and you don't want to lose your job. But there's always, you can only do that for so long. Yep, yeah, exactly. And what are some startup requirements then for the mobile spa? Uh, well, the great thing about the startups is it's, it's not like you're paying rent. Like as if you were, you know, if you're renting a studio, or if you're first starting out. Um, so you don't need to pay rent. So that's a startup, you know, one cost that you don't need. All you really need is a reliable car and your equipment. Um, I have a lightweight table. Um, I also have a cart or a dolly, whatever you want to call it, and I put that on there so that I can wheel it um, if I'm going down a long corridor, say doing a massage in a hotel, um, and then you know a backpack or a bag that you can keep all your oils in and sheets. I mean, if you're just doing massage therapy, and um, other technicians that work with me, they have everything on wheels as well. So as an esthetician. You know, put all their stuff in a rolling suitcase. That's another thing as well. Um, so really, that, those are your startup costs. Obviously, a website. I mean, I know we'll probably talk about, talk about social media or, or you know how to advertise this, but you, know, you definitely want a website um, or a link. You know, a LinkedIn page, a Facebook um, page. Um, you know, and then the other expense maybe getting out and networking. You know, if you join some network groups where you can. Talk to people about what you're doing. And do you bring music along then too, usually? Well, you know, these days, most, I use, most of the time we use a client's um, uh, cable station. Um, but, you know, you can always bring your, I, your iPod. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when I started, I used to carry the huge behemoth CD players. Yeah. And <laughs> I mean, seriously, I would, that's what I would have to bring. I'm talking, you know, this is in the 90s. I mean, now, all you need is a, you know, an iPod and a dumping station, or using the client's um, system. Yeah, and Earthlight even makes one where it's actually plugged into the headrest and stuff, too. It's just oh, like, yes. You know, oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you yeah. do that, too. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what types of services are best suited for a mobile spa, then? Uh, well, the office is, is table massage, um, and then chair massage. Um, you could also do reflexology. You could do um, neck and scalp massage. Um, I also do, you know, depending on where you are, what state you're in. Um, in California, we the massage therapists are allowed to do some, you know, like hand and foot exfoliating treatments. So that's another great treatment you can add to your spa menu if, if you're just um, a massage therapist. Um, I don't know if I said reflexology as well. Um, you could do reflexology. Um, if you've got estheticians or nail te technicians, obviously you'll be able to do facials, mini facials, full-length full facials, 60-minute facials. And you'd also be able to offer manicures and pedicures. And when I do a lot of events, sometimes it's for a small party with maybe 9 or 12 or 15 or 20 women, oftentimes they want mini services. So it could be like a 10-minute neck and shoulder massage, a 10-15 minute foot massage and reflexology. And then maybe they're going to get a, a manicure, mini manicure, mini pedicure, mini facial. Um, I also have palm people uh, who do palm reading, and that's that's popular too in the event. So with this mobile spa, you can really expand your um, service menu. It's so much fun offering all those different services. And, and does it make it ideal for you because um, you, you live on the west coast and stuff, for yeah, um, for yeah. temperature wise too, and. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's helpful if you're living in a, a temperate climate like California. Um, you know, Florida is the same. Um, but certainly in the winter months, if, if you know you do get seasons, you can offer other services like stone massage. Um, you know, people are always welcome that. Yep. And um, what? Um, so, what is the potential income? Would you say for starting um, out? And yeah, well, the great thing about doing this is. 
is that really you don't really reach a cap in income because again it's not just you doing one-on-one -on -one massages that was another thing with me too I wanted to at the time I was saving up for a condo and I wanted to show more income so there was only so much I could do just just me you know one-on-one -on -one. and so once I got my massage up and um, my mobile spa up and running it took about six to seven years before it was really running properly um, I tripled my income. I was able to do that because contracting other, well, you know, the other team, team members. Yeah, so you even bring manicurists and pedicurists who are long to Right, them. yeah, manicurists, pedicurists, estheticians, um, hairstylists as well. Sometimes they, you know, they do updos. We do even prom nights. You're like, like two young daughters. Um, <laughs> but sometimes, I know they're a little young yet, right? But we oftentimes, um, We'll get a call, I'll get a call from a mom and she wants to do a teen spa party. I mean, it's they get their hair done up, the little massages and monitors and pedicures. Yeah, yeah my, 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 my kids, they both, they're seven and ten, they, they get regular manicures and pedicures oh, okay. too. So. Right. Yeah, feeling the few years, but this asking for, for a spa party. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's nice those places give the real discount like five dollars per kid and stuff. Yeah, another area, another group of, of people that um, these mobile spas are good for as well are the elderly people who can't get out to get a massage or a spa treatment, and they're ideal for that too. And um, a question in the chat um, um, from. Ariana, um, I own a mobile spa too. Lately, I've been getting uh, many more requests for larger groups, which is great. But sometimes I have cancellations within the group. How do I handle this? Um, well, what I do is I have a contract when I do the large events, Andrea, and what I I collect a fifty percent deposit up front, and then the balance I either run five days before on the on the uh, on the day of the event. So. Once I book the amount of clients and services, then I tell the clients that's final. So if you get any cancellations on the day, the client is still liable for that because, you know, I'm still sending out technicians and we still need to get paid. And have you ever had any arguments in the past with that then, or has it worked out okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, because it's explained and it's in a contract. Okay. So as long as, you know, I think if people will get, you know, upset if, if they didn't know ahead of time. But if you're explaining everything and it's in a contract, it's written and they've read it and they've signed it, they understand. Yeah. And what's the most effective way of marketing mobile spa services then, would you say? Um, well, you know, the world is your oyster now with social media. So I think I mentioned as long as you have a, a great website, a website that um, explains what you do and talks to the to the clients that you want to serve, and you have a page with your level of expertise and your experience, and some great um, testimonials from clients, and then have a Facebook page. And I always recommend posting at least once a day, and have a Twitter account, and then a blog. So if you can blog about what you're doing, I always like to tell stories about the different events and clients that I've worked with and so clients can get a real kind of backdoor view into your business and then getting out into the community. I think sometimes people think it's all social media, although social media is great, it's only a part of a marketing pie. Um, you want to find some great network groups, decide what clients you want to work with, if you want to work with just women, if you want to work with women um, you know, who are in the corporate world, find out where they hang out and join their groups, um, find meetup groups in your area, and go and network with these people as well. And then you can talk about what you do and offer discounts to those people first if you, you know, when you're first starting out and, and get some get some clients that way. And it seems like a lot of massage therapists are actually burnt out um, from when they were in massage school giving tons of free massages. So they typically don't want to give any free massages once they become a professional. Do um, a mobile spa therapists sometimes have to give um, free free massages or? No, no. I mean, if I if I get asked to do a, 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 like you know an event, come and bring a chair and and uh, and give away free massages, I say no. I mean, we 
we'll, you know, if you want to pay us to be there, we can, this is our hourly rate, and we will be more, more than happy to do that. And what kind of paid um, advertisements um, have you done that have worked in the past? Or? You know, I've had a free listing on Yelp for probably about five years, and I've got some great reviews on that. And right now I'm doing a paid Yelp listing for six months. My phone is ringing off the hook. Yelp is very effective. Oh, it is? Oh, great. It is. It really is. I know a lot of people think they're worried about getting a bad review, but they're worried about something that hasn't happened yet. Yep. <laughs> and it's true, though. You know, a lot of people do it. I, 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 I understand there are some bad reviews out there, um, but maybe that place is really bad. But I, um, I've got some wonderful testimonials, and they show up in Google. They, you know, if they give you five stars, it actually shows up on, on Google with some searching for, you know, for a mobile spa. Um, so people will see the five stars and then hop over to Yelp and have a look at the reviews. I mean, I ask clients that all the time, how did you find out about us? I went on Google, I found you on Google, I hopped over to Yelp, saw your, saw your reviews, and, you know, I was sold. Yep. And how do you com um, combat um, negative reviews on Yelp? Well, um, to this date, I don't have any, but I understand that you can actually contact the client and discuss it. I mean, they do recommend you do that. You can do that. Okay. But you can't get rid of them, I don't think. Okay. But you could actually write to the client. You could make it public and say, I'm so sorry that you blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, I really hope that we can make it up to you or something. You know, I think that they, they actually have, you know, they recommend that. Yeah, and that's a problem with a lot of... Um um, big Facebook pages like let's say AT and T and all these big corporations. Whenever people complain on those Facebook pages, um, AT and T never hardly responds and stuff. Oh. So it just keeps building up more and more of the negative stuff, oh, and then right, people right. get so frustrated and. <laughs> right, right. So you as the as the client thinks, so, oh, well, these these people don't care. Yep, exactly. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> so if you if you make an effort and actually reach out to those people, I mean, then it shows you care and you. You're interested enough to find out what the problem was, or how you could how you could solve it. Yep. I, you know, and in the same token, when you do get a good review, um, I write to that person too on the and you can see it's like, oh, thank you so much for your comments. It really means a lot to us, especially to us. Yep, definitely. And how do you know um, to, if you have enough room to set up a service in a client's home if you haven't seen the space yet? Right. Well, these are things I discuss with the client first, and for example. Um, a massage table is about the size of a single bed, so I'll I'll mention that, and you know we can move furniture around when we get there. Uh, oftentimes here in California, we'll do the stuff for our services outside if they have a pool area or a deck. Um, but these are the things I, I discuss in detail with them. Sometimes if it's close by, I might be able to drop by and have a look at the space, uh, but most of the time I, I'll do it over the phone and, and talk to them. Okay. And send pictures of other events I've done so they can get an idea. Yeah. And uh, what, what is your more popular? Um, is it like bridal showers? Is it um, for a wedding or um, for Mother's Day? Or what, what's right. the big, big holidays then for you? Right. Yeah, I mean, it, it all depends on what's, you know, what's going on. Um, Valentine's is a, is, a, is a very busy time for us. We do a lot of the couples massage and then individual massages. And then sometimes the single girls will do a spa party because they're depressed because they don't have a date for Valentine's. Oh. Um, and then Mother's Day, which right now is huge. Um, it's actually one of the most popular times. Um, we're doing a lot of spa parties for groups of women, um, for whole families. I've got a spa party this Saturday for like aunts and grandmothers and you know, they're all getting together. And then during the summer months, it, we go into the bridal season. So anyway, May, June, July, August, September, it's busy with the bridal season. Okay. And, and then what kind of forms of payment do you usually take then? Or? Um, I collect a deposit with a credit card. So I use an online booking system. And then I you take the credit card information. It's all online. Um, I don't take personal checks. Uh, 
come in cash if they want to do a mark the balance on the day. But it's like I said before with your um, the person on the chat to make sure that everything is finalized beforehand. So there's there's no like oh I couldn't show up. You know, there's no cancellation. So I uh, would say the majority of the payment I take is credit card. Okay. Another question in the chat: um, Do you charge clients per service? Or per hour, and how do you include or cover your transport, decor, and service costs? Um, I charge per hour um, because I found before if you charge per service, um, the client might think that they can take their time. Meaning, if you've got a spa party and you've got nine women and they're each having, say, two 30 minute services. Um, I charge them like, for an hour service instead of two 30 minute services. I don't want to get like, I don't want to confuse people, but I know this is a big question that I get asked, asked a lot. I would charge per hour, but it's also, let me just back up. <laughs> okay, now I'm confusing myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of charging for two 30 minute services per client, tell them I'm charging you per hour, which includes two 30 minute services. And the reason I say that is because in my experience, clients think you're charging them per service. They may, if it's a party, they may have a plate of food in between while you're waiting for that 20 minute service to start. So the clock should be starting from the time that you say you're gonna start. So if it starts at 5 p.m. and you finish at 8 p.m. If you don't charge per hour, you'll be there after 8 p.m. and you won't be compensated for that time. Okay. I hope that makes sense. Yep, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> and what was the other part of the question? Oh, the, dec uh, the travel. Yep. I don't charge a travel fee if it's under a half hour drive. And because I have such a big team right now, um, I, when I book a, uh, a client, if it's in an area where I know that some technicians are closer to, they will they will work that party so that I'm not driving, say, an hour, or somebody else isn't driving an hour. Um, but sometimes, just because the way it happens, they might request me, I may have to drive an hour, and then in which case, I will tag on a travel fee, and that will just go into the, uh, the spa package. And decor, I do... Um, a minimal amount of decor, but I make it very effective. Like I'll bring um, dried flowers that look like real flowers. So once I bought those flowers, you know, they'll be in a pretty vase, and it's not like I have to buy them again for the next party. And then the candles, I'll just buy tea lights. Um, oftentimes clients want to do their own decor because they may have a particular color, a color thing. And then I'll use aromatherapy sprays, um, like I said, candles, and the flowers. And I just make sure everybody's massage sheets are matching. They're all white, so it's not like we've got a pink pair and a spotted pair and a, a plaid pair of sheets. Everybody's sheets are the same, so that sort of you know makes it look more spa like. Okay. And Did another, I answer all that question? Yep. Yeah. And another question, um, Tracy asked, do you need to have a city license in each city that your company works in or um, or does the state license cover everyone, would you say? The state license in California covers every covers the whole state. Now, one time before um, CNTC was um, founded, we used to have to have a, a license in every city. Yeah, because that's a problem in Minnesota. We're not regulated, oh. so it's city by city, so it's very oh. frustrating. So we have to actually contact the other city just to see if there's any extra fees or what we need to do and stuff. So it's just like... Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's certainly worth looking into it. You don't want to, you know, uh, leave money on the table if you had a client from another, another city, right? You know? Yep. So it's worth looking into it. Yeah. Yep. And then you mentioned earlier about uh, you have a team that, um, how can someone, um, how, how can you make sure that you're hiring the right people when you aren't familiar um, with their various services? Yeah, that's, I get that. That's another question I get asked a lot. You know, how do I, I, I wouldn't know what to look for an esthetician or a nail technician. Well, if you're not, I mean, you really want to be receiving these services yourself, so if you've never had a facial before, then go and get one. I'll go to a beauty store, you know, and have the interns work on you, because um, I know they do offer that service. And then a manicure pedicure, I think most people have had a manicure pedicure this year. So you can do your own research, um, you know, 
do some Google research, what makes a good esthetician, what makes a good nail technician. Of course, you know, the sanitization is the key thing. Um, I used to work in a spa and I used to be a nurse and a personal trainer, so I had a broad um, background as to sanitation and because I worked in a spa, I already knew estheticians and nail technicians, so I knew, you know, what made a good esthetician, what made a good um, nail technician. So sanitation, um, you know, whether they're presentable themselves, and certainly I don't know if we have time to go over the interview process, but I do interview my technicians extensively and make sure that they have their own license and, and liability insurance. Um, that is, those are the two key things that somebody must have, you know, because you're not responsible for the um, liability insurance. You have to make sure that those are up to date. And then receive a service and receive a full end service. Um, one of my students who bought my ebook, um, she said that she was having other people actually receive the service for the technicians she was contracting. And I said, why would you do that? She said, well, I just didn't. I didn't even think about that. They said, no, you want to be the one receiving the service. You want to know what their bedside manner is, so to speak. You know, do they show up on time? You know, are they presentable? Is all their equipment clean? Is their massage table sturdy? Is it, you know, it's not wonky or, you know, broken down? I mean, the sheet, are the sheets clean? I mean, all those things. All the kind of common sense things that as massage therapist, you know, you know, with another massage therapist. So definitely making sure the paperwork is up to date and receiving a service. And then making sure they're responsive, um, they show up on time, and you know, you work with them for a few events first to make sure that you can see that they're working properly. And have a you know, a good attitude as well, that's very important. Yep. And and then another question in the chat, I notice you sometimes serve refreshments. Um, do you have to acquire a food or beverage health permit for that at all? Oh, no, I don't serve food or beverage. No, the clients are serving their, their food and water. I recommend um, um, spa water just because it works really well with the theme. And I happen to uh, meet somebody who wrote a, wrote a book um, with recipes for spa water recipes. So with my clients, you know, we're talking about their event and, if they're going to have it during lunchtime or, you know, afternoon, you know, I always recommend that they serve some spa water so it fits in with the whole ambiance. So I'm not physically serving or bringing food. And kind of cover this, but uh, Ariana asked, um, what would you say is the most um, challenging aspect of working with a group of MTs? How do you organize all the correspondence and get people lined up in a timely manner to confirm with the client? So. <laughs> Right. Yeah, it can be challenging. I think it's helpful if you're a good multitasker. Um, when I get a client's booking, um, I will send texts out to all my technicians. And when I interview them, I let them know, you know if you're responding in a timely manner to texts, you'll be the first one to get the job. So it goes like that. I send the texts out, they respond. And then I send the information by email, you know, the address. And then they are to text me when they get that of the client. And I ask them to get there half an hour before so that they can set up. And if they're running late, I ask them to let me know so I can let the rest of the team know. I can let, you know, so the client will know too if one person is running late. Um, and then they will text me at the end of the session to let me know how it's gone. So basically I use a lot of communication. I really keep in contact with everybody. I think a, lot, a big mistake that some of the mother, some of the mobile spa owners may make is that they may send a team out but then they're not checking up on them. And everybody wants to feel important to know, you know, people, we all want to know that we're important, right? So if you just sent off to a client and nobody's asking how it went or can you check in with me, then I think, you know, the communication isn't there. I think because of tardiness maybe what might happen because I think, well, they don't know that I'm there on time. So, you know, because I'm, they haven't been asked to check in. And when you find subcontractors, um, do you, is it usually by word of mouth, would you say more? Or it is, yeah, yeah, it is now. Yeah, when I first started, um, I would actually use the ABMP website, Find a Therapist. They have 
I mean, anybody's association, if you were with AMTA, they will all have an online um, roster of um, a massage therapists that are in your area. So you should contact your, your association. I, I use ABMP. I've used um, Craigslist before in their jobs, you know. Um, but now, honestly, over the past, probably the last five years, it's all been word of mouth. Well, it definitely helps them, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And if it helps if you have a good reputation with your contractors, you know, they will tell their other friends, you know, hey, you know, I work at this mobile spa, and, you know, it's a good experience. You should contact them, so yep. definitely. And the bottom line is, how do subcontractors get paid? <laughs> oh, yeah, I, um, like, in the interview process, I'll take, I'll have them fill out a, you know, W. Too, because there are independent contractors, so they're responsible for their own taxes. Um, but they get to write off all their expenses, their gas, you know, their supplies. And then I um, ha I use bill pay through my bank you know, online, and um, they are responsible for invoicing me twice a month, and they, they receive their checks twice a month. Okay. Sometimes I'll pay them on the day if I'm at an event and I've collected all the funds ahead of time, which I usually do. Um, sometimes I'll bring my check and pay people on the spot, which is just really great. I like to do that. Yeah, and if subcontractors, if they're late for appointment or they get lost, I mean, how do you deal with that too then? Yeah, well, like I said, they, they check in with me. They let me know when well, they're, they're there. Just they're they're checking they'll in. text okay. me. Okay. Um, or I have an assistant too, so she'll help if I'm in another event. Um, so if they're running late, I will know because I've asked them to check in. Yep. And then um, Tara asked, um, um, you said you charge hourly for spa parties. Um, is that on top of the cost of the service? What is the range of your hourly charge usually? Or um, Well, I'm in California, and I have a group discount rate of $99 per hour. At a, that's per um, guest. Um, so the hourly rate would include two 30-minute services or two 20-minute services. So it's not on top of. That is the rate. I think so that's it, a really good price, though, in California. Uh, well, it is because it's a large group. I have a minimum yeah. of nine women. Okay. Yeah, so this minimum of nine women, um, and they're having either three 20-minute services each or two 30-minute services. The party lasts three hours, and they have three technicians. Yep. And, and so does that make sense? Yep, and another question in the chat. How many contractors are you on your texting list right now? <laughs> five oh, fifty. Fifty whoa. whoa. Yeah. Yeah. And those are massage therapists, estheticians, and nail technicians. Okay. And con readings as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um another question from Tracy. Um, how do you prevent a therapist from stealing your company's clients? That's a great question. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah I think it again, there's people I know it comes up and um, I, I wouldn't want anybody to worry about that, you know, and not develop a team just because they're afraid about that, you know, you know what I mean, like don't be worrying about things that haven't happened yet. Um, so what you want to do is develop a know, like, and trust relationship with your contractors. That's so key, and this is something that I've learned because um, I wasn't treated that great when I worked at a spa myself and I was, you know, a contractor. I wasn't an employee, I was a contractor. Um, I always felt like I was just a number. And uh, this is something that is really dear to my heart that people are treated in a way that I would want to be treated. So I've developed to know like a trust with my contractors. And if I can keep them busy, they know that if they're going to give out their own card at a, an event, then the relationship with me will be over. There wouldn't be any more work. It's, it's as simple as that. Um, so I have business cards. That there's a space on the business card where they can write their name so they can hand um, you know, my mobile spa's um, card to a client if they ask for, the, um, for a card. And they can write their name so that they, they know that when the client will call and ask for a service that the card, their name will be on the card. So they'll be the first ones I'll contact if the client wants another service. Yep. And I do offer memberships as well with my clients, and I have quite a few of my contractors that just will work with one particular client um, over a course of three to 12 months because the client is getting a service every month. 
So, um, so you, you don't um, have too high of a turnover with your subcontractors? No, no, I really don't. I don't, no. I mean, some people lose, or some people are Vegas, you know what? But no, I've got some of my technicians that have been with me for over five years. Yep. And then what's the best part of owning a mobile massage business? The best part is A, being able to serve more clients, and B, being able to um, help out other massage and spa professionals too, and give them a source of income that I wouldn't normally be able to do. And again, the travel, you know, the diversity, meeting all these different people and different locations, um, it, it really is, it's so much fun. It, it really keeps you on your toes. And um, the different age groups as well, you know, working with, with teenagers, um, you, can, you, you can really help them, you know, with stress reduction. Because a lot of, I remember we did a spa party for a 14-year-old girl, girl that was just before the fi her finals. And she said she'd been working so hard steady that it was that she got a massage that was such a welcome break. And then working with couples and then working with the elderly as well. You can work with, with that age group as well. And, so the variety. And what I love what you're doing too is I see I've seen video testimonials and stuff. So, so uh, on your YouTube channel and stuff of um, oh, yeah. clients. Yeah. Yeah, so I, th I think that helps out tons and stuff, and I just wish more therapists would start getting into that more. And yeah, what do you mean? How, you mean um, having videos on their website? Yep, and then also, I mean, even video testimonials from clients and stuff saying oh, uh, yes. what, what they liked about the services and stuff. Yes, and, you know. yeah, yeah. I think, you know, I think sometimes as massage therapists, you know, we don't we feel like maybe we're being salesy or pushy or, um, but, you know, honestly, if you're really changing somebody's lives, which, which we are, every time we give a service to somebody, we're changing their lives in some, some way, shape, or form. They're really happy to share their experience with you. Yep. Because, you know, they want you to be successful as well. Yep. And, and then um, you also wrote a book, too. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I wrote um, back in um, December, The Five Steps to Owning Your Own Mobile Spa Business. And it's an e-book. So it's, um, it's a download. And I cover the five steps, like, you know, where do you start first? You know, do you build a team or do you get clients? Um, how to create a stellar team that you can really rely on? Um, uh, how to run a spa party, the spa party flow? Um, what else? No, I've drawn a blank. There's one more thing. Oh, well, I'll come back to that. <laughs> um, but along with the ebook, I also offer continually uh, education and support because I realize sometimes you can buy a book and you can you know, work your way through it, but that if there's no continuing support, you don't necessarily implement all the things because I do have a lot of assignments after each chapter. You know, do this step. You know, this this is your next step because when you're first starting out, it's so easy to get discouraged at first if you don't get results right away or if you don't know what to do on the next step. So I have it. That's why it's called the five steps. Step by step by step by step. And it is a process. Um, but having the ebook and the support is great because um, we meet on the phone twice a month and you know, everybody can ask their questions. It's live and then it's recorded. And it keeps them accountable. Yep. And, and for your first chapter, what comes first in starting your own mobile um, spa business? Can you give us just a little overview of that? And yeah, yeah, and it's it's a really great it's a really great question. I'm glad you brought that up because that's where most people get stuck. Because they, you know, when I meet um, you know people that buy my book, they say, "Well, do I build the team first, but then I don't have the clients, or if I get the clients, I don't have the team?" So what I recommend is if you write this down, everybody, you want to do both. You want to build a team and get clients at the same time. So write that down. You do both. And I started with just one esthetician. So she was providing services that I wasn't qualified to do. And we built from, from just that, just the two of us, just going out doing couple services and then doing spa parties. And, you know, start out small. Don't get overwhelmed. Don't think you have to have a team of 50 or me when you first start out because you don't. And don't think you have to have 20 clients first, you know, without a team. So start small. And the building a team and um, 
networking with the clients at the same time. And then what's the name of your company then? Um, my mobile spa is called Surf the Goddess Mobile Spa Services. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. And do you ever have guys, though, um, apply for your services then, too? Or? Um, I have about three guys, because I also have a, a chair massage company. Um, so I do more, you know, I use the guys more for that. But I just had a request for, it's unusual, actually. I got a request yesterday for two male therapists to do uh, couples massage. That's the first time I've ever had that request before. And, um, you know, I said, I don't have two males available, but I can have male and female. So the, they booked that. But the guys will do more chair massage um, and then and couples. Okay. Yeah. And, and we kind of covered this earlier, but um, this is another chapter. Um, how, do you, um, how do I contact a team I can rely on? Um, well, again, it's, it's really key, the interview process. Um, it's knowing what to look for in another um, technician. If it's another massage therapist, you probably know yourself that you're a massage therapist. But if they're, they don't have their paperwork and they don't have the, you know, their uh, school contracts and everything and certificates and they don't have their liability insurance, it's not worth interviewing somebody. I'll get calls sometimes from people saying, I really want to join your team. I said, well, do you have those paperwork? And they say, no. I said, well, contact me when you do because you're going to need that. If somebody's showing up and they're late or they've got lost, um, okay, everybody gets lost. But if they're not, if they show up half an hour, half an hour late or cancel on you, then don't even waste your time. It's just really not going to work. It's 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 a sign from the beginning. And then developing the no like and trust, you know, over a period of time, then you can really start to rely on these people. But the onus is on you as well as the mobile spa owner. You have to sh show by example as well. Yeah, and, yeah. Is there a lot of traffic in your area too? So they have to definitely look at that then? Yeah, it can be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, now you know, everybody's, pretty much everybody's got a navigation unit or they use their iPhone so you can get an idea um, of you know, if there is traffic on the road. But pretty much everybody here in LA knows they have to give themselves an extra half an hour pad, you know, a little padding, time padding. Um, so they can be there on time, um, but at the same token, you know, clients are sympathetic um, if somebody's running late because it's just the nature out here. Okay. And, and then another chapter: um, How do I get clients? We kind of covered that a little bit, but. Well, yeah. I mean, I talk about this in, in, in great length, and it's really discovering who your target market is and who your ideal clients are, um, and. And I do have a process that I cover in, in, in the book that oftentimes your ideal clients or your target clients are pretty much like you. I mean, if you've been an athlete, you probably want to work on athletes Good because you can empathize with them. You know their issues. You know their nature of their work. Or if your dad's a CPA, maybe you want to, really want to work with CPAs. Or if you've been pregnant yourself and you know how it was, you know, getting massages or spa services while you're pregnant, maybe you want to focus on, you know, on women, you know, pregnant women. So it's, I have a process where you can really define on your ideal clients and what your target group is. And then you want to find out where, they're, where these people hang out. Are they a member of a club? Um, do they belong to an association? Uh, what books do they read? What blogs do they read? What you know? What Facebook groups are they a member of? And you can get in front of these people without leaving your home. And you can answer questions on people's blogs, on their comments. You can go to their meetings and you know talk about what you do. And, you know, talk about all the different services that you offer. Um, you could actually. Uh, this is another thing that I discuss in the book. Is if I use pregnant women as an example. What other people come into contact with that woman while she's pregnant? It's her um, OBGYN, maybe it's a yoga teacher, maybe it's a, a, um, a hairdresser. All these other people that come into contact with them, you can actually go and talk to those people too and tell them that you will offer these services that could help this client. And I recommend that you pick up 10 of these, I call them power partners, 10 power partners, and then contact 10 of those. So in, at the end, that's a 1,000 people that you could actually contact 
to introduce your services to as a complementary service for that particular client using the part time component as an example. Okay. And then, so that's yeah, that's yep. one way of, of expanding and, and, and getting to them, getting out there. Yep, and another question, um, Tracy asked, would you recommend an LLC and corporation or DBA um, for the company's yeah. formation? Yeah, I haven't, I don't, I'm not even incorporated myself yet. I, I'm still a DBA, a sole provider. Um, some people want to do that right off the bat. Um, again, it's an expense. Personally, I think it's better to get some clients in the door and start making some money, and you can do that down the line. Not, you know, but if you want to do it off the bat, and somebody else has recommended that to you, then, you know, by all means, go ahead. But sometimes people will not start this business because they think they have to do that. Yeah. But you don't have to. Okay. Uh, in my experience. Yeah. Anyway. And another question um, How do you prevent property damage in a client's home? And if <laughs> If there is damage, how do you provide compensation? Ooh. <laughs> yes. I hope that never happens to anybody. Um, you know, ABMT, I remember of ABMT, um, so they do have um, property insurance as well. But you always make sure that you are covering your clients if you're doing any services on, you know, if you're doing a foot massage or, <clears throat> excuse me, or if any of the male technicians are doing hand and foot treatments or manicures and pedicures that you cover. The client's furniture if you're using the furniture. Um, if you're doing a massage, um, I always cover the area with a, a sheet, you know, a drop cloth, and make sure that you're not going to put an oil on somebody's furniture, that you keep it in your in your um, belt if you have a holster, or if you cover it with a towel, you know, put a towel down first so you're not sitting down any oil. Um, you know, on people's furniture. So you just have to be very much aware that wherever you're going to be, you need to protect the client's area. Um, we bring our equipment, like the nail technicians will bring around the folding table and a chair so we're not using the client's area. So if you were to, you know, if you were to damage, I would offer to pay for that damage. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, and, and then um, another chapter in your book, uh, what are the best services to offer and what to charge? We kind of covered that and stuff, but yeah. uh, what is the most popular service, would you say, that you offer? In my mobile spa, it's, it's massage and, and manicures and pedicures. Yeah, so depending on where you live, you know, what state you live in, um, again, it's probably, you know, people in California, women wear samples all year round, um, but, you know, depending on where you live, it might not be as popular. But certainly you could do other services instead of manicures and pedicures. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I mentioned about doing an exfoliating treatment, paraffin hand and foot dips, that kind of stuff that you can add to your service menu. Um, I discount the spa party rates. Um, here in LA, the average average in-home massage is anywhere between 125 and 160 um, for an individual a massage. So I charge in between those at that area, like where I want for 50, but I offer a discount to couples, and then I also have memberships, where if they buy three, six, or 12 sessions on friends, they get a discount. They get, obviously, more of a discount if they buy 12. Then the spa party is, it's about a 40% discount for a group um, to what they would pay for an individual. So if it was 150 for a one-hour massage, on an individual, we charge $99 for a one-hour massage if it's a group of nine and one. Okay. And, and have you ever used Groupon or anything? No. no. I haven't, no. Um, I know, I, th I think Groupon's great for, um, it's probably better for like a restaurant <laughs> mm. who maybe they'll do a Groupon special at lunchtime and if there are many people in. Um, or for a, a bricks and mortar spa, maybe for somebody just starting out. I know there. Um, I've discussed this before, and I've read other papers. I think Eric Brown did one, and they had it in the Massage and Body Work magazine. But apparently, I think there's like 11 percent of people that buy Groupon or buy it that don't actually use it. So you can count on keeping retaining that money. But by the same token, there's the other percent of people that will you know, use the, the group home. And because we travel, um, I would be losing money. 
so I couldn't, I know Groupon wants you to reduce the price by 50% and then give them back 30%. So I'd end up with 20% of what I normally charge. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't work. Yeah. But instead, you know, I'll just, I'll get out there in the community, I'll do my own um, special offers within my own client list. You know, I have over a thousand clients um, in, on my list that have, you know, seems being part of my uh, my mobile spa community, and then I'll offer them discounts during the holidays. Yeah, because especially having all those subcontractors and stuff and running those specials, and so you don't usually run many specials in. No, only, I mean, right now I have a special for a spa party right now just because of Mother's Day, but um, I don't necessarily believe in discounting when it's a holiday, but I'll, I'll bundle up. Um, I talked about this on, the, I, I am um, on a LinkedIn group the other day actually about Mother's Day and saying instead of discounting like you want our massage, why not discount an hour and a half? you know, take off $15 off an hour and a half massage so people will get the benefit of an hour and a half massage versus an hour at a discounted rate. So it's something that maybe they wouldn't have normally tried. Or if you wanted to bundle it with a, a spa service, like a, a facial or a manicure and pedicure for those people. So you're discounting it a little bit, but it's not like you're devaluing it. Because I think that's what happens if you discount too much. People don't see the value anymore. Always want to buy. They always want to buy the sales price. Yep, exactly. <laughs> and and um, what has been the most challenging all these years and stuff in the mobile spa business? Well, you know, when I first started out, I didn't have a mentor, or I didn't have a coach, or anybody to help me. I really much, I just pretty much went out there and made tons of mistakes, but learned from them. Um, so I do remember at the beginning. Um, not collecting a deposit up front or having people cancel at a spa party um, and losing, you know, I would lose money myself and still pay my contractors. So, so, but of course I've learned from my mistakes. It can be a challenge sometimes when you, like this week has been, it's already, it's only Wednesday, but my phone has been ringing off the hook because it's Mother's Day. So it can be a challenge balancing everything making sure that I'm balanced in my life too because this is what we practice to our clients right having a balanced life and so I always have to pencil my own um, self-care time in. and this is something that is again very dear to my heart is that myself as a practitioner and also as a business owner that I take care of myself just as I would want my contractors to as well and uh, my clients and, um, and another question I never really heard of the site much, but Manta, M-A-N-T-A, have you ever used that for your business? No, what is that? Yeah. Um, it looks like uh, ways to grow small businesses and stuff. And, oh. Yeah. So I'll check that out too and stuff. I've seen that a few times in the past, but I've never really delved into it because there's so much out there. That's the problem. <laughs> is that somebody on the live chat? Yeah. Oh, Manta, okay. Yeah, definitely. And then um, with you also um, you said mentioned earlier about um, group coaching and stuff. I mean, how many people do you help help out at a time? And are there certain time frames and stuff that you um, meet with people over the phone? And sure, yeah. Um, this group it's called the Mobile Spa Success Program, and it's twice a month on the um, second and third Monday at four p.m. Pacific, seven Eastern, and it's for an hour. So we do, it's a lot of Q&A. So these are people that have, have bought my ebook, and they're working through the book. They're looking through their assignments. And so they have a chance to ask their questions, and I can answer them live. And then everybody listens in, which is great because, you know, you have a room full of, say, six to eight people, and each person is asking a question. It's helpful for the other people in the group, too, because it will bring up stuff that maybe they haven't thought about themselves. So it's... It's really great to be in a group. Like I said, it's, it helps you be accountable and gives you that extra support and focus. Because when you're on your own and you're working through stuff, um, I know what it's like. There's so many distractions in life. And if you have to go and cook your husband's dinner, and when you really would like to, <laughs> you'd really like to study a little bit more, you know, it, it happens. So it's good to have that accountability and to be with people who all have the same goals. 
Um, but again, that, that's very important. And then on the third Monday at the same time, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 Eastern, I interview a, a professional. I've interviewed a branding expert, for example, or a, a CPA, somebody that will answer CPA questions. I've also inter um, interviewed experts on LinkedIn and social media. Um, also, I interviewed a lawyer. Um, so you can get the chance to ask these people questions. If you have questions like maybe about an LLC, is it necessary? You know, I also interviewed a trademark lawyer because I trademarked my name. And again, that's very important. You want to be, you know, down the line thinking about trademarking, especially if you have something really unique. One of my students is, um, she's forming, she's doing a salsa, salsa sauce parties. That's a lot of essence, but she, <laughs> a passion, she's a, a, a dancer. She loves to salsa dance. So she really wants to serve the salsa community and relax and rejuvenate the salsa dancers. So she's formed this fabulous company it's called salsa to spa .com. Um, so she's trademarked her name because it's a very unique, it's very niche, for example. Um, so that's on the third um, Monday. And all the, uh, the calls are recorded and they send out you know, the MP3 recordings so people can listen again and again. Well, I mean, I mean that's nice you have um, continued support and stuff like that because so, yeah, so many places it's, don't. And, yeah, it's, yeah, it's really about the focus too. It's about staying focused. It's, it's, you know, it's like, it's, it's, it, it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <big> focus. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and um, what can we expect from you in the future then? Well, um, I'm starting to develop um, two other programs because what I've realized is the people that I've met, the students that I've met that have gone through my classes, um, is I want to develop another two programs. So I want to develop, oh, I am, I want, I'm developing right now as we speak actually, um, is a, a program for people who have just graduated as well from the from massage school or an you know, esthetician school because I don't feel there's enough support, career guidance from when you're in school and you pretty much you graduate and then you have one, you know, you really don't have many choices if you think, well, you're going to work for somebody else. Yeah, cause, right. yeah, so many massage therapists, once they graduate, I mean, they get a little bit of business knowledge in schools and some don't even get any and stuff, but they definitely need um, yeah. that help because the thing is they got the skills to pay the bills with their hands, um, but right. they just need to, that knowledge and right. and most massage therapists, I mean, are haven't had a lot of um, education and st I mean, in the business knowledge, so. Right, right, so that program is what we call Start Your Practice. And then I have the middle group, which is the people that are you know, reaching the burnout. They've got the clients. Maybe they're working still in the spa, but they want to go out on their own. And that's when we can you know, start building a team. And then the third group is called Build Your Empire. And those are the people who really want to start getting like, big corporate events and do like three or four day, day events. Because I have those clients as well. Because, um, again, that's another area that is, would be very helpful helpful to have extra coaching and expertise. And I've done the TED, you know, the TED conferences, I've done those um, for three years in a row, and they're over four days. So I know how to work those um, corporate clients as well. I know how to get those corporate clients. I know how to um, coordinate, you know, a lot of massage therapists. You know, I've coordinated like 20 massage therapists before at an event. So I know how to do that. So those are the two extra programs that I'm introducing, which is, which is how to create a mobile spa business. Again, it's all mobile though. It's not, I, like I said, I've worked in a, a spa before, but it didn't really, it was okay for me for a few years, but I just really wanted to get out and, and travel. It's, it's, you know, it's not for everybody to do mobile spa. Some people like the security of going to a spa and clocking in and out, that's fine. But for those people who don't want, to do that, the mobile offering mobile massage is uh, is a way to go. And you're also going to be on national TV soon, do it, right? I am. Yes, this Sunday, um, my mobile spa was chosen by a local uh, net, uh, TV called KTLA Channel Five, and they are doing a Mother's Day Mother's Spa Day at home, and they put it out to all their viewers. And I think I talked to the 
the station on Monday and they said they had 40,000 entries oh. to went to the spa <laughs> that <home. laughs> yeah. So they chose my mobile spa to be the spa to provide the service. So we'll be on TV on Sunday morning, um, very early at 6 in the morning. So we'll be doing a massage, uh, facial, a manicure, pedicure, and hair styling and makeup. And then they go out for breakfast. So they'll be um, all weekend long. They'll be uh, flashing um, my company name and logo twice twice an hour. So it'll be fabulous um, advertising. Oh, that's huge! Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And they're blessed and very grateful for that opportunity. Yep. And then, what's the best way for people to get a hold of you then? Uh, the website is called How to Create a Mobile Spa Business dot com, and on the website you will see all the different ways to. Um, you know, look at the ebook, see what's included. Um, at the very least, um, get on my list, which you get a free report on the six reasons to get started on a mobile spa business now. And I talk about the the other, you know, the many other benefits, the you know, tax write-offs, and the fact that you can serve more clients, not burn out. You can increase your income. You can travel more. And you can have more flexibility in your schedule and spend more time with your family. Um, so that free report is, is on the website. It's how to create a mobile spot business .com. And then you can see the ebook, the programs. Uh, and then I taught a class in January of 2012, and I've uh, created a download product from that. So it's five recorded, five one-hour recordings of the class that I taught, taught with some live coaches. So there's um, a lot of things that you can look at on the website. Okay, great. And and leave your comments below as well. Um, I know this is going to go on YouTube tomorrow, right? Yep. Yeah. So if people want to ask questions, you can you know ask questions in the comments below the video. Yep. And it should actually be live within a half an hour, just because it's streamed and stuff. So it's. Oh right. Yep. So right. and all the comments are saved there too. So. Oh great! Yep. Oh, that's really good. Yep. That's really good. Yep. But um, you know, like I said I graduated in '93, and I'm still. In the business, you know, there's not not a lot of massage therapists that, after twenty some years, are still in the business. I mean, I know there's quite a few out there, um, but not there's you know a lot of people either retire or they burn out or they don't know how to market themselves. Unfortunately. Yeah, definitely. And and then um, so thank you very much, Helen. I mean, oh, is that it? We ran out of time. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are, you are definitely the best in the business for the mobile spa. So any person that needs help in this area, make sure you guys go to Helen. All right. Okay. Thank you. And thanks to everybody for tuning in. Yeah, thanks everybody. Thanks.